All right, welcome back to part two of the holidays, this being the truth about Christmas. So we were reading scriptures in the the Lord's heart about uh, following after the commandments of God and how the Lord has commanded us to not take up the practices of the nations, to not emulate the nations, to not take up their gods, to don't not to act like they do in their worship of their gods, even if we change names. Amen. It doesn't change the idol. It's still an idol. Yes. And demon spirits have rights to their own idols. Amen. In Mark chapter 7, I'm going to begin at verse 6. Follow with me, if you will, please. He said to them, Rightly did Isaiah prophesy of you, hypocrites, As it is written, these people honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. But in vain they do worship me, teaching as doctrine the precepts of men, neglecting the commandment of God, ye hold to the tradition of men. And then he goes on and he says, he was also saying to them, you are experts at setting aside the commandment of God, in order to keep your traditions. And that's exactly what has happened. The commandments of God are clear. Do not act like the nations. Do not take in their idols. Do not make their idols part of worship of me. Do not mix. Look what I've done to Israel. Look how they were judged. And what has the church done? The same exact thing. And we've done it through Catholicism. And I'm telling you, brethren, that are listening to this video, listen, the churches are backsliding now. There is a horrible apostasy happening right now. And church after church after church, Protestant churches are going back and giving their allegiance to the Pope. Brethren, don't do so wickedly. God has set you free from these things. Don't go back to it. Don't go back under the Pope, which has brought in more pagan religions. Listen, under Catholicism, voodoo is legal. Voodoo is part of worship. Under Catholicism, Islam is part of worship. Really? They're killing Christians right and left, but all of a sudden it's okay, huh? You know, what is going on? There isn't any any true knowledge or discernment. The churches are going back and submitting to them, brethren. Flee from them. Flee from them. Flee from the harlot church. The harlot church is taught and still teaches that traditions trump the word of God. And they don't. Traditions cannot negate the word of God. But in people's lives, it makes the word of God of no effect, just like Jesus said. He said that to the Pharisees, by your traditions, you've made the word of God of no effect. In other words, it's not having any effect in people's lives because you have made your traditions more important than the Word of God. And so have the Catholics. And so have a lot of the Protestants. And now the Protestants, the light they did have, they're giving it up. And they're going back under Catholicism. And they're accepting greater darkness. This is a a great apostasy that's happening. It's happening right now before our eyes. I just saw the Salvation Army just went under and are doing it. Listen, brethren, I know some are going to accuse me and they're going to say, oh, you're such a hateful man. I'm not hateful. I love people. They're all my brothers and sisters and they all will be someday, even if they're not at the moment. What I don't like is I don't like the devil convincing my brethren to drink poison. That's what I don't like. They're my brethren and I'm jealous for them. The Lord is jealous for them. And they're drinking poison. And I'm trying to warn you, cast aside that abomination, cast aside that cup of poison, and be holy before the Lord, as is his commandment. John chapter 14, verse 15, Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. If you love me, keep my commandments. And usually when you quote this to somebody, they'll say, oh, but I do, I keep his commandment, I love everybody. Wait a minute, keep his commandments. There's many commandments. His commandments are the Father's commandments. I just read you the Father's commandments. 
Leviticus 20, 23, more, moreover, you shall not follow the customs of the nations. What are we doing with the Mass of Christ? That's a Catholic holy day. It's a Mass. It's where they, in each Mass, they, they sacrifice Christ again and again. They call it transubstantiation. They, they, they sacrifice Christ over and over and over again. It's incredible. It's incredible. 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 14 through 19 for your notes. Watch how you live. Be holy as I am holy. Be holy as I am holy. Can you imagine, brethren, Jesus walking in and saying, Oh boy, it's my birthday party. Where's the Santa? You think you'd do that? Oh, absolutely not. 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 19, keep the, keep the commandments of God. Keep the commandments of God, of the Father. There's people that say, well, in the New Testament now, we're in the age of grace, so we don't have to follow anything about the Old Testament. Let me tell you this, something. Listen, Jesus fulfilled uh, uh, the law, okay, by grace. That's true. And grace covers our sins. That's true. But the commandments are the same. Why do you think you're taught in Sunday school the Ten Commandments? If the commandments weren't the same, what are we doing teaching the Ten Commandments? They are the same. The Ten Commandments are the same. So are these commandments. So are these commandments. Don't act like the, the world. Don't act like the nations. Don't worship their gods. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Leave behind all of those things. I'm going to turn here to 2 Corinthians. I'm going there on my computer, and you can go with me. Chapter 6. Oops. Starting at verse 14. Do not be bound together with unbelievers, for what partnership has righteousness with lawlessness, or what fellowship has light with darkness, or what harmony has Christ with Belial, or what has a believer in common with an unbeliever? Verse 16. Or what agreement has the temple of God with idols? For we are the temple of the living God, just as God said, I will dwell in them and walk among them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people." In verse 17, therefore, come out from their mist and be separate, says the Lord, and do not touch what is unclean, and I will welcome you, and I will be a father to you, and you shall be sons and daughters to me, says the Lord God Almighty. Come out from among them. Come out from among them. Listen, Jesus said, if you love your mother, your father, your brothers, your sisters, your friends, or your own self, more than me. You're not worthy of me. Many people follow the traditions of the Catholics because it's a family thing. It's a family day. Well, so the whole family worships the idol together. Does that make it right? How about this? How about you stand in light? How about you stand for righteousness? How about you stand in light and say, I am not going to partake because it's an idol. And they say, if they say, well, then you're judging us. No, that's your walk. I'm not your judge. And I know your hearts are good. I'm not your judge. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And we will not touch the unclean thing. We will not touch the unclean thing. In Luke chapter 6, verse 46, Jesus says, Why do you call me Lord? Lord! And you don't do the things that I tell you. And people do. They pick and choose. The Catholics taught everybody how to pick and choose. Oh, a pope, a pope. They can tell you what the word is, and they can change it if they want to. They stand in the stead of Christ. And so they can speak ex cathedra. And they can make up scripture as they go. Oh, how, how convenient. They can make up scripture as they go. Wow. Wow. The only problem is it's not real. 
and it will result in judgments. You're not supposed to touch the Word of God. You're not supposed to change or add it in any way, or there's judgment on you. Woe to those who have changed it and taken light and made it dark. Jesus said, call no man father, your spiritual father. You have one spiritual father in heaven. The popes, what do they demand to be called? From, what's the word pope mean? Papa. It means father. What, are they, what do they call priests? Fathers. It says, do not uh, 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 forbid to marry. What do they do? You can't marry. What does that lead to? Homosexuality. So they start attacking children. It's just, it's ungodliness. And it's darkness. This is why the Protestants came out. The Protestant, the word Protestant means protester. Their protest hasn't ended. The Catholics are trying to say, oh, we've changed. And we've taken care of all your protests. No, these, uh, these ungodly things are part of the protest. It hasn't changed. It's gotten worse. Okay, I'm going to teach you something here that's a little bit deep. It's going to take you to, a, but it all ties into this. And I'll have to go to the next, next one to uh, finish it. But I'm going to go fast, so I'm going, to, I'm, going to, I'm going to move on. Turn with me, please, to 1 Corinthians chapter 8. Let me go there on my computer, too. He starts off, he says, Now concerning things sacrificed to idols, we know that we all have knowledge, we've gained knowledge in God. Knowledge makes arrogant, but love edifies. He's trying to remind people, look, don't, don't, de don't depend on knowledge for your godliness. You need to love people, too, Okay. If anyone supposes that he knows anything, he has not yet known what he should know. In other words, look, don't let, don't let your mind be puffed up because you have some knowledge. All right. So then he goes on, verse 4. He says, therefore, concerning the eating of things sacrificed to idols, we know that there is no such thing as an idol in the world and that there is no God but one. So what he's saying here is, he's not saying, look, um, there's no such thing as, a, as uh, uh, an idol that people have in their lives. That's not, that's not what he means. There's obviously idols. There's always been idols. They've, they've worshipped idols since they started worshipping Cain uh, and, uh, and his murder of, of righteous Abel. Okay, so uh, there are idols. What he's saying is, look, an idol is just a, just a thing. It's really nothing. And, uh, and these gods of theirs, don't worry about it. They're really nothing. So he's saying, don't put a lot of stock or, or fear or superstition in their idols. That's really what he's trying to tell us. Verse 5, for even if there are so-called gods, whether in heaven or on earth, as indeed there are many gods and many lords. So he's saying, okay, yeah, they worship a lot of different gods and then lesser gods uh, as lords. There are a lot of them around the world. Then verse 6, yet for us there is but one God, the Father, from whom are all things, and we exist for him. And one Lord, that word Lord is uh, Strong's word uh, uh, kurios, the Greek word kurios, Strong's number 2962. It means master or sir. It's what you call a king. Isn't that interesting? It's what you call a king. Jesus is our king. We have one God, and it's the Father. And then we have a king, the man Christ. It says, by whom, the word by is literally through, through whom are all things and all things uh, 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 and we exist through him. In other words, he's the fulfillment of the logos. The plan of God all worked out because of him. Verse 7, now, however, not all men have this knowledge, but some uh, being accustomed to the idol until now eat food as if it were sacrificed to an idol and their conscience being weak is defiled. Now, what he's saying here is this, here in verse 7. Not all men have this knowledge, but some being accustomed to the idol until now eat food. Now notice the word food. This is talking about food, brethren. It's not talking about non-food. Okay? We need to make sure we understand that. Non-food is things that are unclean that were never meant to be consumed by man. Would you eat a rat? Well, that's not food. Would you eat a poisonous plant? Oh, that's not food. Okay. Would you eat uh, a swine's flesh? That's not food. Okay. It was never meant to be eaten. That's why people that eat it get sick. 
okay? And trichinosis is one of the leading causes of death and infection in the world from eating swine's flesh, even to this day, okay? So um, that's not food. So I'm going to end there, and we'll see you on the next video. We'll continue this. Amen.